I'm Kyle Rackey. And I'm Kevin Springer. This is the Proposal by Biz Chat where we're talking today about serial entrepreneurship. Mm. What is a serial entrepreneur, Kyle? Um, I think I tweeted once that a serial entrepreneur is like, it's like a serial killer, you know? Somebody who's, because I think to be a serial killer, you have to have killed three people with like some space in between. So it's Usually three, no, no, it's three. Right? I mean, That's how they define serial really? entrepreneurship. Yeah. Or uh, sorry, serial killers. Because okay. they kill three people. Okay. At least three. Like if you kill two people, you're not a you're serial killer. It's You have to have at least three kills and they have to be spaced far apart. Okay. With usually no motive in between. Like right. there's usually a cooling off period. So I like to joke that serial entrepreneurship is like you killed three businesses with a long cooling off period and you had no motive at all. What if you're Richard Branson though? He's known as one of the top serial, serial uh, business <clears throat> owners or entrepreneurs in the world. And his businesses, I mean, he's killed a few. Out What's of he known for? Way, but he's, he's got so many businesses. What's he known for? Virgin, of course. Virgin Records, Virgin Airways, the Virgin brand. But yeah, he's, yeah. He's, I think he's got 200, I was looking at his 200 endeavors. Yeah, yeah. So what I here's my thing about serial entrepreneurship is like, I don't think it's a bad thing to say you've run multiple businesses. And in fact, if you're if you're able to, like I know you flipped some businesses in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's I mean that's a successful entrepreneur, somebody who can grow a business into an asset, sell it, make some money, move on to the next thing. My thing about that though is that if if you find that you're able to sell businesses so easily. And I'm talking not you, just people in general. Yeah, yeah. Is when you obviously the person who bought it feels that there's some value in it. They can take that and they can grow it even bigger. So my thing is like you get to a certain point where you don't need the money. Why not try to go the distance? Why not try to build it into? As because not everybody's built that way. Some people like to just um, you know <clears throat> it's the uh, try new things. You know I mean it's mm -hmm. uh, it's variety is the spice of life. The old saying. I mean. Mm. That's why a lot of those people do that. They, they like to plant the seed, build the business up, and then empower really good people to run it. Yeah. And then go on to the next thing. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'm just coming, coming at it debate style from the other yeah. standpoint. I think there's, there's value in that. Uh, I was having lunch with a friend the other day who said something similar, that he likes to kind of build a business to the point where it can run on its own or with a management team, but he doesn't like to operate it. Mm. He just likes to kind of let it go, and then he'll go and start up something else. Um, I think what I've learned in the last year especially is I've learned a lot about myself and one is that I thought that I was the kind of person who liked the startup grind where you, you know, you're trying to get product market fit, you're trying to do like early stage customer discovery um, and that I was a little bored by the operation of a business that's mostly kind of growing on its own. Mm. Um, but I think ever since we started the Gino Wickman traction style of uh, running the business, I now enjoy the, the the scale a lot more. I enjoy like you know coaching the leadership team and doing weekly sync meetings and coming up with yeah. quarterly targets. Like I just enjoy that a lot more. So let me ask you this: If you end up dabbling as an angel investor after being say you've got a business mm -hmm. like a Proposify and you know, you're seeing it through, mm -hmm. but you you invest in kind of uh, help other businesses take ownership of businesses, are you considered a, a serial entrepreneur or just an angel investor? I'm. Consider an angel investor at that point because you know Kevin and I have uh, invested in a business We can give a shout out to Dave Howe crib cut yeah. uh, our first angel investment yeah. We'll probably do more in the future and we get to kind of help Dave with things that we're able to help him with um, But I, I don't view that as, as like oh, that's another entrepreneurial endeavor for me because it's him who's doing it But He's what's nice though is fulfills that kind of hey, you know something a little interesting different yeah. on the side Nothing wrong with a mistress, Kevin. I mean, <laughs> that's that's, that's what, yeah. <laughs> But I, like, think about bands, right? Like, most bands are known for one thing. Maybe they did a solo career True. afterwards, but, like, you know, a band doesn't go, oh, I'm going to actually start four bands at the same time and try to make them all blow up right. and become yeah. hugely successful. Or they don't just come out with one album and then go, okay, we're done, moving on to a different band. Like, th there's no way to, if you want any kind of success or growth or notoriety or legacy or whatever it is you're trying to build, you can't be doing like 10 things at once or two, three things at yeah, once. Yeah, because I was looking, um, you know, didn't really prepare much for this, but I did right before I came over and said, what is a serial entrepreneur? What are people really, because I mean, I was, I've been called that and I'm really not that. 
Hmm. Because mine's been over the years, yeah, okay, you start a business, you run it, you say, okay, this is a pretty good business, I'm not gonna get wealthy on it, but I enjoy doing it, hmm. but it's time has passed, and, or I'm moving on somewhere else, or I'm even moving demographically, yeah. I'm gonna start something else. So because of that and all the different industries I've been in, people think I'm a serial entrepreneur, but I'm really not. It's, it's like you said, it's like it's a person that in a very short time is doing a bunch of businesses or mm. trying to start a bunch of businesses or own a bunch of businesses. I mean, I was looking at uh, Forbes magazine that they, they interviewed um, 900 billionaires mm. not too long ago and 850 of those uh, actually made their fortune on multiple businesses. Mm. Most of them were serial entrepreneurs. Right. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you look at um, Jeff Bezos. So he's, yeah. uh, I've seen an infographic or something of him that shows all the different endeavors, just from Jeff Bezos alone, like his own investments, and also through Amazon, the acquisitions and all that stuff. No doubt about it, like Amazon's a huge beast. Jeff Bezos is a huge beast. My point, I guess, though, is that Jeff Bezos grinded for years and years getting Amazon to the point where it could acquire yeah. businesses and he could do these kind of side endeavors. That's kind of my point is that if he got Amazon to the point where maybe it was doing like a couple million dollars a year in revenue and then he's like, all right, I'm gonna leave this now and I'm gonna go start something else, he, Amazon never So your thing is the is. follow through, the importance <clears throat> of the follow through. That's true. The scene, yeah. And really it's why we took this most recent investment too because we thought, okay, we didn't need to take that, that money. But we thought, let's let's do it, and that's going to give us get us into the long haul now because mm -hmm. we're committed now to propose a the long haul. Exactly, and like, yes, we could take our leadership team and we could just get them in place, and you and I could probably take off for a year or two, you know, go enjoy tiki bars in uh, what's that island? You know, in Florida, Florida. Sanibel Island. Sanibel Island, you know. But the thing is, like, do you think the business is going to have that? the same chance for success, and by success, I mean growing to be much larger than it is, if we if we weren't involved day to day. It doesn't mean we have to be involved every day, because I think what a lot of people, when they say they don't like to operate businesses, I think where there's a, a, a confusion in terms is that operate doesn't mean I'm responsible for every sale in the door, I have to answer every customer support inquiry, I have to make every delivery, or whatever operating means for you. You can still have employees doing that, but I don't think it's a good idea to just like, you know, take off for a year, come at the end of the year, take your dividend check and move on. Like that's more of an investor at that point. You that's know, not running a business. Yeah, you're not really running the business. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, you can have the best of both worlds. You can run the business, you can, you know, you can create the vision, the strategy, work with your leadership team, and but you don't have to also do all the, all the grunt work. You don't have to be in the trenches every day. I think it's, uh, I think uh, serial entrepreneurship is, is I mean, the, the, the term itself is pretty, pretty broad. Mm. And I think a lot of it has to do with where, the stage you're at in your life. Yeah. If you're young and you know, have kids and you, you, know, you can try, you can just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Right. And I don't even know if that's serial entrepreneurialism. You're just trying new businesses and seeing what works, what doesn't work, what you like, what you don't like. Mm. And, I mean, it's just kind of a, a path and a, a journey, right? I like that you brought that up because you're you're a sporty fellow. Ooh. You you enjoy your sports and your coaching. Yep. I mean, imagine that, uh, like your son, amazing athlete, runner, mm -hmm. plays yep. basketball, does a whole bunch of different things. But if if Camden, if you really thought Camden had a shot at the NBA and he wanted to do it, yep. right? Would you probably wouldn't advise him when he gets to say the college level, and his dream is to be in the NBA, to go like, well, you know. Just, just mess around, experiment. See, he can do that now because of his age, but when you get to a certain point, like if you want to be in the major leagues or the NBA or the NFL or the NHL, and you're 18 years old, 20, 19, 20 years old, like you got your shot, you take it, right? Well, it's funny you say that now they're saying, you know, 11th or 12th grade is when you should start to specialize a bit. Yeah. Unfortunately, they have kids specializing way too young, mm. but because diversification in athletics have proven it's, it's very it's very healthy. But yeah, around 11th, 12th grade, I mean, to your point, you should start to specialize. Yeah. If you really have a special uh, gift or you're uh, you're good at one one particular sport, that takes going to give you a full ride scholarship or mm -hmm. like you said, pro a shot at the pros. So, so, so I, I agree with you. Yeah. So. But I view the person that that kind of chooses to get a business up and running and then just leave it to a, a team to operate and then move on. And the next thing is like you get to uh, the minor leagues in hockey, yeah. and then you go, you know what, I'm gonna try basketball now. I think serial <clears throat> entrepreneurship works really well when you get to be at the level of like a Richard Branson again, like you're, you're, you're a billionaire already, you've already got the Virgin brand, because he's tried some other things that have failed. Mm -hmm. A lot, most of them have. Yeah. And um, I think when you're at that point, then you can really start to 
to get to, to do that. It depends if that's what your goals are. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's just like the it's like thinking about the Stones. You know, I mean, they Rolling Stones have made so much money, but they continue to tour. They continue to write more songs because they just love it. I mean, someone like Richard Branson, they get off on just starting new businesses. And, yeah, and I mean, it's but the Stones different. are doing. The Stones, yeah, right? The Stones music. aren't like, oh, no, no. we're going to try classic. No, no, I know, but I'm just saying as far as, you know, where you're at the point you are in your life and what you really choose to do, I mean, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. They could put on the Blues album if they wanted to. Yeah. It really yeah, wouldn't yeah, matter sure. to them. <laughs> They've got enough money. <laughs> I like to see Keith Richards just like playing the viola or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Maybe uh, he does. <laughs> maybe he does. Uh, you know, I've got this, uh, another friend, not the one I was talking about too, I, we have this, this argument all the time that... You know, he's like, I always hear that you need to focus and, and um, but you know, I want to do a service business and a pro try to build a product and try to do this and that. And I'm like, and try to also be a, a musician and get an album out. And I'm like, man, you got to really like, if you wanted anything to get to a certain level of success. Yeah. I mean, we didn't, um, we didn't have a lot of success with, with Proposify until we got rid of our agency. I was just, focused you just on read my mind to that point. You were just getting to that. Yeah. I mean, we were, uh, great advice was given to us that we had to do one or the other. Yeah. And that's when it changed. Yeah, totally. Well, I hope this shed some light. Anything else to add? No, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Serial entrepreneurship, what does it mean to you? Would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I might get blasted, who knows? It's I kind of interesting. I'm start out with serial killers too. <laughs> so wait into, you know. There you go. Make sure to hit subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you next time. All right.